Okay, we're going to look at proving quotient and reciprocal trig identities. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to establish what the reciprocal trig identities are. And then they're uh, pretty much almost like rules. If we know our first one sine theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse part of a right angle triangle, uh, cos theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tan theta is equal to the opposite over adjacent. So we've labeled this. This would be our theta. If our theta was the other angle, then the opposite and the adjacent sides would switch. The hypotenuse is always opposite of the right angle of the triangle. So, um, with that being said, um, we can write that our cosecant, okay, so cosecant theta is equal to the hypotenuse over the opposite. So, that idea is that it's the opposite of what our sine theta is. So it's the hypotenuse over the hy uh, opposite, which is the opposite of sine theta, hence why they write this rule. The rule ends up being that sine theta is equal to um, 1 over cosecant theta. They are reciprocals of each other, as you can see by the rule. Um, the next one would be secant theta is equal to the hypotenuse over the adjacent. Again. The opposite idea of cos theta. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Secant theta is hypotenuse divided by the adjacent. So the reciprocal of that, um, which is how we get our cos theta is equal to 1 over secant theta. And then finally, we get our cotangent cotangent theta is equal to the adjacent over the opposite, again, which is the opposite idea of our tan theta. Tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Cotangent is adjacent over the opposite side, which gives us our reciprocal identity of tan theta equaling 1 over cotangent theta. Okay. And just as a quick proof of how that works, I'll quickly work with the sine. Okay, say we were to um, replace these ideas. So we have sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? Um, cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. So sine theta, and we're going to write this rule in one over cosecant. But we know cosecant is actually equal to the hypotenuse divided by the opposite. So, with that being said, this is division of fractions. So we have 1 divided by hypotenuse over our opposite. Okay, And what we might want to do here is turn our 1 into our, um, our 1 value here. So when we're dividing by fractions, we're going to invert and multiply. So we multiply and becomes 1 over opposite, <coughs> excuse me, over hypotenuse. And you get opposite over hypotenuse, which is what sine theta is equal to, and that's exactly what 1 over cosecant theta is. So that just kind of proves um, that reciprocal idea, and that uh, doubles, and that rule stays the same for cos and tan. That's the exact same thing you would do there. Um, the quotient, quotient rule, let's write it in another color, it's too orange here. Our quotient rule, so this will be our, uh, our last one here, we'll call it our quotient, is that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. Okay, so here we're going to use our rules here, sine and cos. Okay, so we're going to write in what sine and cos are equal to. This is kind of like um, proving trig identity. Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, is divided by the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, again we're dividing fractions. We have opposite over hypotenuse divided by adjacent over hypotenuse. We invert and multiply multiply and we flip our second one, so hypotenuse over adjacent, okay, and we get opposite times hypotenuse over hypotenuse times adjacent, and the hypotenuse divided by hypotenuse create a 1 or cancel out, and you get opposite over adjacent, which is exactly what tan theta is equal to. So <coughs> that's just a proof of the um, quotient trig identity and just kind of showing you the visuals for the reciprocal identities for trig functions.